What we're going to do here in the next couple of weeks for our word of the week is kind of break down the components of a MIG welding gun or a gas metal arc welding gun. Uh, we're going to start with the most basic uh, part, I guess, and that would be this week's word of the week, which would be the contact tip. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, if you don't know what a contact tip is and you're in the welding world, it's like a 35. You really need to know what a contact tip is. Most people are sitting there going, yeah, of course I know what a contact tip is, but there's a lot of people that might not know, so we're going to go over here. Um, and you can see it's in gas metal arc welding and flux core arc welding. That's where you're going to this contact tip. I kind of did a section of a gun right here. It's not the best drawing. I have a real gun here. We'll look at it in a minute if this doesn't make sense. But this uh, hidden line here going around will be your gas cup. The contact tip is right here. It screws into your gas diffuser, which usually has holes right here to let the gas out. So 75, 25 usually, or uh, depending on whatever material you're doing. And then there's a set screw right here because the liner comes in and connects right in there. So uh, we're not really concerned with any of that stuff other than the contact tip. The contact tip just threads into the diffuser. Real simple part. All right, so let's go down. Raise this up anyways, and let's go over a couple things here. Cost. They're pretty cheap. I, I just got uh, two quarter. One was for a Miller. One was for a Lincoln gun. And one was 97 cents. One was 75 cents. Very cheap, right? The problem is, if you uh, have problems with your contact tip, uh, it can cost some more money. Not in the sense of the 97 cents and the 75 cents, but in downtime, right? Uh, what will happen is you can get it to freeze if your settings aren't right. It'll suck back up into the contact tip, freeze it, and that causes bird nesting in the machine. So then you got to take the wire out, you got all kinds of downtime, and you're losing productivity. Other problems, if you have the wrong size, that's not going to work. The whole point of this contact tip is to transfer your amperage from your machine, going through your machine, to the wire that's being consumed in the weld. So that's why they call it a contact tip, because it's maintaining contact with that, with that wire and transferring the current into the weld. you got to have the right size. If it doesn't have the right size, A, the wire won't even fit into it. If it gets real sloppy, you won't have good contact, and you'll have, you'll have a poor weldability. Other problems, cross-threading. This is really annoying, because what people do, when they're changing the contact tip, if it, stop, if, it, if, it, if it starts getting cross-threaded or won't go in real nicely, stop. Something's wrong. Because once you've cross-threaded this, you've not only ruined the contact tip, but you've also ruined the diffuser. Maybe we'll go over the diffuser next week. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but uh, we'll look up the cost of that. That costs more, too. And what happens if you cross-thread it is it, it'll be, you know, cocked inside the diffuser, and it just can cause problems as far as the contact tip going up and, like, hitting. See how this is angled up? Now, if you're getting spatter in there, you're going to short out to your contact tip. It's just a big pain. Don't cross-thread it. Uh, if something's coming, or if you turn that on and it's, it's not going on real well, stop. Clean it. Check your threads. Maybe file the threads. Whatever you got to do. Uh, so what we'll do now is I'll grab a big gun. We'll show you a, a real live one instead of this drawing that I had. Uh, in case you don't really get it according to this drawing. So we'll look at the gun. This probably gives you a better idea of what a gun looks like. It's a Miller Roughneck. I found it out uh, hanging there. So I just grabbed it. Well, let's take a look at the contact tip. All you have to do is unscrew your gas cup. This is your contact tip. And it just threads out. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go grab every different kind of contact tip I can find. And we're going to line them up. Take a look at all the differences in them. Now before I show you the uh, many different types of contact tips that we have out there, I wanted to show you the size. That was one of the things we said was important. And that's just the diameter of this little hole right here. And probably one of the most common sizes, if I can get in there without it going blurry, see that? It says 035. That's how you know you have the right size. 035 and 045 are probably the most common. If you go to 025 or 030, that's probably a 110 machine. If you're getting into heavier diameters than 045, you're doing something that's really thick and takes a lot of heat. So usually it's an 035, 045, but that's how you know what it is. Hard to see. I think I can see it good here though. So now we're going to go pull a bunch of uh, contact tips out of uh, all the different types of MIG welders we have out there and take a look at the differences. 
Well, what I did is I went out and grabbed a contact tip off of every different kind of machine that we had out there. The most common, I might have forgot to mention this, they're usually made out of a copper or a copper alloy. Obviously to conduct the electricity, but the three on the end there are probably the most common. They're out of Miller 252s on the end, and then a Tweco out of a Magnum gun out of a Lincoln. Then you can see as we go to the right, there's some aluminum ones. There's one I pulled out of a robot, and then the one on the very end is one that's froze up. And you can see there's a big gob of metal on the end of that. Could have caused a bird nest, I don't know. I just saw it sitting there, so I grabbed it, but um, that's one of the main problems you can have happen to a contact tip. So they come in all different shapes and sizes and they're not interchangeable at all. So don't try and put a Miller on a Lincoln or a Lincoln on a Miller or an ESOB or whatever because you will cross thread it. The main thing is you have to know what a contact tip is on a MIG gun. Don't go up and ask uh, you know, somebody for the little copper thing on the end of the gun. You need to know it's a contact tip. So it's, it's a pretty basic part but you need to know it. So that's all we got for this week. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Well. We'll see you next week with another MIG gun part.